Wow, it's almost the new year, and we're gonna spend this episode reflecting on some of the biggest jerks from this past year by reading some wild Reddit stories. And today I'm joined by two very special guests, Arasha and Anthony. You think we're yeah. special? I feel special. Oh. oh. Oh, not anymore. Oh no, oh no, we can't wear the hats anymore. <laughs> Damn. Oh no. When we walked in here, it's like, Arash was like, oh, there's hats. <laughs> oh. Arash was like, am I the asshole? I made the hats purposely fall off. <laughs> am I the asshole for not wearing a stupid hat? <laughs> for a video I was cast to be in. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew no one was for it. <laughs> All of the, these stories today are from 2023, uh, and they're some wild ones. These are some of the biggest jerks from this year. Yeah, how was, how was your, your guys' year? How was your 2023? Oh I mean, Anthony, I feel like we know. I had my whole year out on display, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. This year's been crazy. Yeah, yeah, for it obvious has been, reasons. It has been crazy. I would agree. This year, I feel like is like it's been the biggest year for a lot of people. I yeah. feel like it was a real relaunch for everybody. Like it's been almost three full years now, like since lockdown. So mm -hmm. I feel like it was a huge time jump. H have you guys seen that thing where like psychologists are calling it like the pandemic skip, where like you're still the age that you were when the pandemic happened. Yeah. So yeah. it's really jarring for people who were like 18, but they were like 14 or 15 when the pandemic yeah. started. And they're like, I don't feel like an adult. Yeah, yeah. and they didn't even get to go to real graduations and things oh, like that gosh. during that time. Yeah, I yeah. I feel so bad for them, yeah. So yeah. I feel like this was the first year that like things kind of started settling back to somewhat normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and that, that was a little unsettling, but in, in a lot of ways it was really great because people could be out there again and, and doing their thing. Yeah, no, I feel like this is the first year that I grew. I feel like for mm. from 2020 to 2022, I feel like I was just completely stagnant. Interesting. Feel that. I can kind of relate to that. Yeah, it was a wild year, so I'm curious how these stories are going to be. Um, I'm curious what it, what this year was like for so many others. Yeah, we're about to find out. Well, let's just hop right into these stories. Uh, our first one comes from our relationship advice. Say, 26 year old man. I found her, a 28-year-old woman, I found her TikTok after we went on a date. Okay. okay. Interesting. Found. Oops, I found this. Yeah, oh, right. I found your TikTok <laughs> by accident. <laughs> this is honestly not something I expected to post about, but here's the thing. I have known this woman, who's 28, for a while since we are in the same friend groups. She's a nice person, attractive, and honestly, I've always enjoyed my talks with her. A few weeks ago, I asked her out on a date. I figured if she says no, it's fine, but she actually agreed. We went on, the, on a date this past Saturday, and honestly, I thought it was awesome. We went out to dinner, had drinks, spent the rest of the night talking, and we even took a walk on a walking bridge over the town's lake. It's not a big one. I dropped her off and was elated. I absolutely loved the night. However, that night when I was scrolling through TikTok on my bed, a post from her, I didn't follow nor knew she had a TikTok, appeared on my For You page. Essentially, she said in the post, getting ready for a date I really don't want to go to. That was like a bucket of ice water being thrown on my head. I was so freaking happy and I just found out she didn't want to go on a date with me. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying she was, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying she has to want it, but please let me know if that's the case. We don't need to go out. We can forget I even asked her out, but doing this on the internet, it made me self-conscious. Not sure if that's the right word. Now, I'm unsure about what to do. Should I tell her I saw this or just forget about it? Honestly, it really hurt me, and I'm not really sure I want to give this another try. I mean, she didn't want to go out with me in the first place, right? Uh, damn. That's really sad. That's, that's super that, sad. Yeah, so I mean, I was making a joke that he accidentally found her TikTok, but it sounds like he really was not trying to find yeah, it. Yeah, he stumbled upon that. Yeah. For you pages are weird, and I do, th I mean, they, yeah. They, they like know your circle they and who you're interacting know. with. That's, where's the asshole? Is it is he asking if he's the asshole for asking her out in the first place? So this is this is relationship advice. So oh, he's okay. actually not asking. He's just saying a situation. He's asking for advice on okay. what to do. Should he confront her or should he let it go? I do think there is obviously an asshole. I think she's totally an asshole for doing that. Yeah. That's, that to me is insane. Uh, uh, unless we're missing a bunch of context and he's really creepy. And, or she or, felt threatened, or like she, she felt had pressure, to say, or yeah. she felt pressured. But I, 
I'm not getting that sense based yeah. on this. I would that would have to be a complete flip from the information we have. I think a get ready with me while I go on a date that I don't want to go on, knowing that that person could potentially see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely tough. I think. I mean, I think I think the important thing is we are missing a lot of context, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because the thing with social media is, you know, she could have just been putting that out there as like a a hook. She's like, oh, I really want people to watch my TikTok. People will watch it if I talk about a date I don't want to go on. That's True. interesting. That's We don't drama. know what kind of content she makes. It could totally. be a joke because she's already getting ready. Yeah, Absolutely. like, I, and, and truly the only way to figure that out would be to communicate. So my best advice to this guy would be, yeah, just bring it up. I don't think it's like, I saw your TikTok, but I think it's like, hey, I saw this TikTok. I was super psyched about our date. I, I thought that you felt the same way, but this suggests otherwise. Like, I wasn't digging around, but I just came across this, like, do you have anything to share about it? And I feel like she can also step up and she can decide if the date did go well and she's super embarrassed, she can be like, that's so my bad, you're right. Like, I was just nervous. As people do get on first dates, like yeah. those, you kind of don't want to go on any first date because you're like, dates are tough and hard. Circling back, you know, he said, I have known this woman for a while since we were in the same friend groups. Someone they that he knew and knows her could have seen it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. entirely possible. If I saw that, if I had a friend who was going on a date and I saw their date post that, I would probably let my friend know. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, is this a joke? Is this, what? what is this? Yeah, um, not cool. Like that's kind of rude, he's probably gonna it's, see that. It's super rude. Um, my hope is that maybe he didn't see the date, maybe it's something she had posted a while ago. Right. I do agree, it's, it's something you could post as a joke or trying to get engagement if you're trying to get followers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I don't know, but I, I, I think if I were him, I know, unfortunately, if I was in his position, I probably wouldn't say anything. I was going to say the same thing. I was I, like, I think I would give the same advice as you, but yeah. I would just, I think if I were him, I would not say anything. I'd probably just kind of be like, all right, I'm going to hold off. And if she wants to go on a second date yeah. and says something cool, otherwise I'm just going to probably not say anything and see if she even, if, she, if, if, if I think she's not interested, then we'd be like, I'll just back off. What if, what if, like the second date, like she initiates it, it goes super well. Like, does anything then get I would, brought up? Then I would go, okay. I, I would probably bring it up in that instance and say, I thought you didn't want to go on this because I saw your TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, I would then bring it up on the second date. I would. I would believe if she initiated a second yeah. date, I would mm -hmm. then be like, okay, yeah. she actually yeah. is interested and maybe that's a joke. Maybe you know, it's just, maybe, maybe I misunderstood. That is totally fair. I, I, Cause again, I feel like you think about the protocol after a first date and it's usually just like trying to pick up on any clues if both of you want a second date. Yeah. And I think if you pick that clue up, it's kind of like, okay, I'm just gonna back off. Yeah. yeah. But and I, I, I only really suggested that because it does seem like he's pretty giddy about her and I, I, like I've been there. I feel like it sucks when you're on a first date that you feel like you're vibing with and you thought that they were vibing and then you're like, wait, yeah. what? Like I think you that's weren't the, that? I think that's the right advice. And while I still wouldn't take it, <laughs> while I wouldn't <laughs> take that advice myself, I, I, I do see how that would be better if, if I were to do that because otherwise I am gonna perpetually be thinking about that. Oh yeah. Every time Absolutely. I see her, I'm just not gonna be able to stop thinking about it. I'm gonna be like, it's not that big of a deal. In my head, I'll be like, it's not that big of a deal though. And then I'll be talking to myself, I'll be like, you shouldn't really be worrying about this. It's not that big. And then I would just be constant, this loop. Just I, I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to be comfortable on a date until yeah. I talked about it. I would have to. And I, but I would try to bring it up very lightly, just like, okay, hold on. I, I, I was on TikTok. What? I think my For You page served it to me because it, you know, it's weird, and um, yeah, I saw that, but I don't know, was, is everything, if you don't want to be on a date, Right, just being like chill, smooth yeah. about it. What about this, what if you ended up in the same group again, you know, because it's a part of the same friend group, oh, if you true. ended up side by side with her, yeah. Do you just let it slide, or do you? Or just pull up her TikTok <laughs> next just, to you. You're just, just watching like, it. Check this TikTok out. I'm a big fan. I've been watching it since the day that we first went on a date. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you could definitely be sneaky about it too. You could post your own TikTok, watching a TikTok of a girl who talked about not getting, wanting to go on this date. Getting with ready me. for a date that I am so f excited <laughs> for. Um, I don't. I, I. I mean, obviously, like so much of my life is on the internet, but I don't understand people who share to that degree, yeah. I don't understand it. Like, it's that meme of like, 
people posting stuff and people respond being like, Batman couldn't get this information out of me. But it's like people <laughs> just straight up put it out there. And I'm like, yeah. wow, you're, you're saying to the internet you're about to go on a date you don't want to go on. That's true. That does say a lot about you as well. If you are agreeing to dates that you don't I think it would be a red flag for me even if it was, even if I found out, oh, that wasn't for my date. I think I would still view that as a red flag because I'd be like, oh, that's a little disrespectful and weird. Mm. Yeah, I think, think, you know, that's a really, that's an interesting uh, topic that I feel like I've been discussing with a lot of my friends in general. Like, how much of yourself should you put out there publicly? Like, especially, you know, for all of us, like, we're internet personalities. How much of our truth are we wanting to share and what yeah. maybe is best to keep like within a friend group like maybe personal stuff that could hurt other people maybe that shouldn't go public but i i personally don't see any problem with being like get ready with me to go on a date like if you want to talk about you being out there in the dating world totally fair but i think the line of when it could hurt somebody and when you're maybe being a little uh uh naive about mm-hmm. how widespread this TikTok could really go. Like that is that is asshole behavior. Yeah. I'd definitely say less is more in terms of giving out private information as content. I've mm-hmm. I had periods of time where I daily vlogged every single moment of my life, every single moment of my relationship. Mm-hmm. Like I literally vlogged me getting engaged and obviously that didn't work out. This is many years ago. But not not worth putting it out there just because I think I was in the mindset of like, gotta get content out, gotta get content out. And I mm. think a lot of people get into that headspace mm. and less is more. Let's see the comments here. Um, I'd comment on the post and ask if the date went well. It's <laughs> oh. oh. a bold move, oh. I like that. Whoa. Uh, someone said, I would message her and simply say, hey, your TikTok about getting ready for a date popped up on my feed. I'm sorry you didn't want to go. You could have simply told me and that would have been fine. If she messages back trying to explain or still express interest in you, simply turn her down. No further explanation required. People don't change behaviors if they aren't made aware that it affects other people. Someone else said, as an introvert with some social anxiety, I don't think I've ever wanted to go on a first date. Even if I really liked the guy and wanted to go go to the location, my mind would always convince me I was going to be unhappy. Luckily, most of my first dates had been fine or great. Sprinkle in a few duds. As an older woman, I don't understand this need to post everything that goes on in your life or, or in your mind. Sometimes it's nice just letting pass, passing thoughts pass. But I also understand younger people grew up immersed in social media and this is normal to them. This person has made it clear that she's going to post things publicly that you may think should be private. That alone may drive you to decline any future dates with her. And if so, just let her know you saw her TikTok and aren't comfortable with your, with your dates being the subject of her videos. Be forewarned, she may post about it. If you choose to see her again, I think it's worth having an honest conversation and setting your boundary around what you aren't comfortable with her posting. Um, yeah, I, I think, I frankly, my favorite out of those is just posting and saying how the date went. I think that's like, <laughs> just being it's, snarky back. It's simple and it's like, it gets it done. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like charming. I think it's kind of <laughs> light where, because also the reality here is that they're in similar friend groups, they're gonna end up hanging out again. Yeah. And so you don't wanna make it super awkward. Yeah. It's one date, you can just still kinda like let it let it go without making it tense between the two right. of you. That is so tricky. I honestly can't say what I would do because I, I don't know how often they interact. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I think other people pointed out something really great, which is yeah, like how she's going to continue to act in the relationship. Cause right, yeah. like if they have that conversation and it does go south, her next TikTok, like that guy right. saw my TikTok, like that's really right. good clickbait. Like everybody would definitely watch that video. So if she is more focused on uh, her image online and trying to get followers, get views and stuff like that, it's probably best for him to bow out now. Absolutely. Damn. <laughs> Update. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so dumb. Uh, uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, Hello everyone, some people have reached out to me through comments or chat asking for an update on the situation. Sadly, there isn't much to share at the moment, but I'll provide what I can. Please keep in mind that I won't be discussing this further, nor will I reply to comments. Thank you for your understanding. (coughs) After last week's post, I read almost every comment, or at least most of them. I'm thankful to all those who commented and shared a bit of their own personal story. Some people mentioned that anxiety is normal and feeling like not going out is definitely common, suggesting that I shouldn't look too much into it. While I agree with their perspective and see no fault in not feeling like going out, what bothered me the the most in this situation was having a post 
what bothered me the most in this situation was having to post a TikTok for a significant audience. I'm a private person by nature, and even my social media accounts like Instagram have only a single post. I don't really like to overtly share, nor do I want to be with someone who does. It's completely fine to share whatever you want, I just don't want to be part of it. So I decided not to contact her. I chose to pretend I had never seen the post and let things be. I understand a lot of people might think this isn't the best choice, but I feel it's the best course for both of us. Last Thursday, a few friends, who also happened to know her, invited me for drinks. We went to a bar, and while we were eating and enjoying our drinks, a mutual friend asked me how my date went, as our circle was aware that we were going on a date. I didn't want to say much, so I just replied, oh, it was good, but I don't think we clicked. This friend followed it by saying, we figured, which made me feel rather uneasy. When I asked what he was talking about, he hesitated but eventually said that, he had, that they had seen a TikTok post from her about not wanting to go out. At this point, I didn't really know what to say. This situation is just incredibly messy for me, but there's not much I can do about it. Still, I wasn't going to mention it, nor did I try to look up if there was any update on her part. In fact, I deleted TikTok after that incident. It just wasn't doing me any good. Nevertheless, this past Saturday, she sent me a text. She mentioned that she enjoyed, enjoyed our date and asked if I wanted to go out again. I understand that she clearly stated that she enjoyed our time together. However, I don't want to be with someone who exposes so much of their personal life. It's not something that would be good for me. So I decided to tell her the truth and sent a text explaining that while I absolutely enjoyed our date, her company, and that I thought she was an amazing woman, her post from the night of our date came across my For You page on TikTok and it made me feel really self-conscious. While I understand that she enjoyed the date, contrary to what she felt at the time of the post, I didn't feel comfortable going out with someone who had such a high level of exposure online. I wished her the best and expressed hope that she finds someone whose lifestyle aligns with her. She has read the message and left me on read ever since. I don't think she will reply, and I don't think we'll have a lot of social interactions going forward. I'm sorry if that, uh, this wasn't the update you guys were expecting, but yeah, sadly, that's what the situation became. Anyhow, wish everyone a good day. Wow. Um, that's curious. I, I gotta be honest, I'm a little surprised she did ask him out again. Yeah. Um, it has me leaning towards the thought that maybe it was a social anxiety thing of like, oh, I don't want to go on a date. Like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, I would have to see this TikTok, you know? Right. But I also think he made the right choice because it sure. just sounds like he's recognizing we're just such different people. Yeah. And that's a fair thing to oh, do. Oh, yeah. No, he's a king. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was so calm and he wasn't like, he wasn't attacking of her in any way. Like, he was like, that's your life. Like, this is how it made me feel. Yeah. But also, I just don't think that this is going to work out because of that. Right. And I, I think it says a lot that she didn't respond. Like, I think uh, usually when you, um, in a lot of cases, like not responding to somebody putting their feelings out there, I think it's really immature. Uh, absolutely. Like, yeah. he was he was being just so honest. And, and again, like, he said that he wishes her the best and things like that. Like... I would think that she just got embarrassed and was like, oh God, I gotta go. Yeah. And again, another sign that that relationship wouldn't work out. Had she maybe responded and been like, I'm so embarrassed, this is why I did that, or like, I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. Like, I, I, I'm sure he would have been like, totally fine, let's do that second date. I, yeah. I also feel it's poignant to bring up again, I, I, you know, it's not usually fair, but you know, she's 28 years old. It's like, dude, by 28, yeah. you should be able to withstand uh, a, a conversation that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. You should be able to respond. Like, I, I understand when people are like teenagers and you're in your early 20s, you're still like gaining your confidence. You're still figuring out how to interact with certain situations. Yeah. But by 26, 28, like... Come and leave, on, you can show on some red respect. Too? That's like, crazy Come behavior. on, that is so high school. It's, it's disrespectful at any age, but... The older you get, the more I'm just kind of like, you didn't learn it by now. Right. You know, like yeah. at a certain point, you figure it out. I think it takes a lot of courage to have boundaries and to express those boundaries and at the same time be respectful in those. And he really was firm. He said, that, I mm -hmm. don't think this is going to work. And he was so communicative about it. I think she was embarrassed and then that's Absolutely. why she didn't respond. Right. Absolutely. And And for him to have like put on such a good date for her to like completely 180. He yeah. sounds like a great guy. Absolutely, and and you know, bravo to him for he caught, he saw the red flags that were red flags to him, and he said, I'm calling it here. And yeah. I, I respect that. King. Yeah, king. 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 All right, moving on. This next one is an Am I the Asshole post. 
Now I, now you can find now, I can, now, I can, can now I can figure out who's the <laughs> asshole. <laughs> we'll, we'll determine this time. Oh my God. <laughs> what? It's not, it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Okay. Don't read ahead. Am I the asshole for showing up at my ex's wedding in a pretty dress? You know this no, is you are layers. not. <laughs> it's funny because it's funny because you know that their interpretation was that I just showed up to the wedding in a pretty dress. That was it. That's it. The fact that, that you know there's more to it. Oh, it wasn't there's, just there's that. There's absolutely more. But just from that, you're not yeah, an asshole. Yeah. You did good, girly. My ex and I had a peaceful divorce. We co-parent our three children together, and there haven't really been many issues. My ex is getting married to Stephanie. I like Stephanie. She has been great with my kids and makes my ex happy. My ex invited me to their wedding and I was happy for him. It was my day with the kids, so it made sense for me to come. That was his reasoning. When I arrived at the wedding, Stephanie thanked me for dropping the kids off and brushed me off. We had never had any issues before. I explained that I was going to stay for the reception and she was very upset. I was confused because I assumed she knew I would be in attendance. It turned out she didn't consider that I would actually accept the invitation. I told her that I was invited, and since I took the two-hour drive, I would be staying for the entire duration. She didn't like this response. Stephanie asked me to leave, and I stood my ground. She went on to complain about my dress upstaging hers. My ex and former mother-in-law helped her to calm down, and the wedding shortly began. I thought that that was the end of it, but later in private, Stephanie accused me of trying to ruin her special day. She is convinced that I wanted to show off and make the wedding about my divorce. She said it was rude for me to not leave after the bride requested it because it was her special day. I told her that I am not responsible for her insecurities and once again reminded her that I have no interest in stealing my ex back. Um, okay, we have the dress. Um, oh, God. there's the dress in question. Thank God. I want you to open your eyes. Okay. Gorgeous. Yeah, it, it okay. is a great dress. It is um, nice. Oh my God. Product name via Amazon, women's sweetheart full lace beach wedding dress, mermaid bridal gown. Oh, it says bridal gown it, in she the did, description. She did get a wedding dress. Oh, okay. Uh, it's red, but it is a wedding dress. But it could, you could also wear it to the beach. Uh, but it's a it's a lace beach or, wedding yeah. dress, <laughs> mermaid, mermaid bridal gown. Mermaid. Um, I don't know. I feel like they just put a bunch of keywords in the topic. It's hard to know if it was right. Right. I gotta be honest. Uh, this is my thinking. Like if I were, and it's different, I guess. But sort of, I'm like if I was going to an ex's wedding, I'm not trying to fucking stand out. Yeah, I am trying to wear, I'm trying to like. This is, I'm standing be out. Be there and just kind of like, hey, I'm here. Yeah. I, send me the link. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel like I would be, I would want to be a little petty to my ex's yeah. wedding. But also I would never go to my ex's wedding. Yeah, no, I, I, I would not. admit that it would, would be kind of like, petty to go. No, it would be like petty. That. I. Well, also this, if they sent her an invite, She's allowed to accept it. Don't, whenever people go, oh, I wasn't expecting you to accept the invitation. Don't send like, the invite. That's some bullshit. Yeah, like, sorry, yeah. I sorry I didn't read your mind when yeah. it came in the mail. Assume they're gonna say yes, especially a wedding where it's like this weird pressure of like, well, if I say no, then yeah. is that right. more of, what's more disrespectful, to and be there or not? If she talked to her ex-husband about it too, Maybe he's the asshole for not passing the information to uh, his absolutely. bride. That's like, true. She should definitely not have been like, wait, what, you're staying? Like, I feel like some precursor could have definitely saved a lot of time, but I, I definitely think she's valid. Like, yes, they share children. She got an invitation. She drove two hours. Like, I have no issue with her. That makes sense. Uh, the, I think her being there is she was, she was invited. Yeah. And yes, they have kids and she's there for the kids. So I think Stephanie's weird for saying, I wasn't expecting you to accept the invitation. Right. Now, the dress. The dress, dress of a, choice the was The dress bold. feels, I, I, I. It's a statement, it's I a petty kind of. I think there was a choice that was made here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it is a wedding dress. It's just not white. If it's white, that right. is blatant. Okay, yeah, no, but it white, is a, she's an but asshole. But it's also a wedding dress. Uh, I will. You don't. When you're going to a, a wedding of any sort, you're not going to look up wedding dresses yeah. and wear a wedding no, dress. No, no, true. but but you do look up like wedding guest dresses, and you know sometimes bridal gets thrown into the description. I I, I will also say uh, this is not. I I am not aware of this information. I don't know much about wedding, but I, weddings. But I know uh, apparently uh, some of our information here says in to some. 
wearing red to a wedding is sometimes considered disrespectful as well. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Now, that, that may not be the case in this right. situation, okay. but I will say it's the thing that I've always heard growing up is like, you don't want to try to like wear something huge and flashy. Right. You're trying to be there to, it is their, their, their day. Night. Right, yeah. like you just um, have to dress formally to fit exactly. the dress code. Exactly, like you, you, you dress well to show respect for them, but this dress is pretty nice. Like I'm can like, I, damn, I that's, that's co uh, comments down below. Let us know what you think. With, with Indian weddings, like what I can say is like, the bride is like, there's a lot more to her than the dress. Like yeah. she's got jewelry, she's got mandy from head to toe. Like she is all out. And personally for my wedding, like I want all of my friends to go all out. I want everybody to dress like in Indian clothes as well. I don't, I wouldn't think of it as like an upstaging or whatever. But then like when you bring in the whole like, like I know white is so big for uh, traditional American weddings. Mm -hmm. And if that dress was white, like, I'm livid, For I'm sure. on I'm on the bride's side, like you cannot do that. So if that's the case in terms of like uh, the glam factor of this dress and it really did upset the bride, like it, it's kind of hard to be upset at the bride for 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 feeling like that. Uh, it is her special day. I think the context too of like this is his ex who he has kids yeah. with, like it, you know, like if you're some random person at the wedding and you wear this, it's like, okay, whatever. Right. But you know, walking into this wedding, yeah. that you are... Also, yeah, just not the not just the ex, but we have three children together and we will always be connected in some way. Mm -hmm. Right. But I will say the moment that the bride, if I were there, if the, the moment the bride asked me to leave, even if it was a two hour drive, I would not feel comfortable staying there anymore at that point. Yeah, I think I would have personally left, even if it was an uncomfortable two hour drive home, just because I don't want to be somewhere where I don't, I'm not welcome. Totally, personally. totally. Yeah, no, I, I would go to like the bar across the street or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, like, yeah, go I, do something else. I don't want to be there I, anymore. I'd get away. I'm in a hot dress. I'm going <laughs> yeah, anywhere. Yeah, else. yeah. Go out. <laughs> um, be seen. Yeah. So the comments, uh, looking at the comments very quickly, solidifies my opinion on this. So someone asked, can you show us the dress? Which means she didn't put that photo up immediately. Oh, she was trying to withhold that information. And, and that's one of those things where when people do that in Reddit posts, I'm like, you're the asshole. Yeah, the you moment were, that they're you were trying to get, You were trying to get <laughs> public favor without giving us the most important piece of information. Yeah. That's true. That you're the asshole. All you the know time. what you did. That happens all the time when they the are time. the asshole. Yeah, I, I would love a picture of her too, like her that's in the true. dress. True. She made people go to her profile to see the. Did the she photo. give them the referral link so if they bought it, she would get it? She'd yeah. Get it. Commission. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great commission post. Um, so, that person who asked to see the dress, they said, after seeing the dress, you're the asshole. That dress is too much for a guest at a wedding. Way too bright, and unless this was a super elegant wedding, too much. I doubt it is too elegant, as you said. Barely any dress code was given besides no white. Uh, Someone else said, not the asshole. Personally, I think uh, you should have left, but I don't think you're the asshole for wearing a pretty dress and not leaving. Reason being, Stephanie had two chances before her wedding day to address this. First, she could have made sure you were not sent an invite. Second, she could have rescinded the invite once you RSVP'd, yes. It's her own fault for waiting until you showed up to deal with this. She ruined her own wedding day. Edit. I just saw the picture of the dress. <laughs> There's no way you didn't know that would be too much for a wedding dress, <laughs> especially an ex. Are you kidding me? I was giving you the benefit of the doubt, but now that I just saw the picture of the dress, you're the asshole. You absolutely knew what you were doing. Stop trying to pretend like you didn't. Lastly, someone said, you wore a red lace wedding dress. I saw the Amazon link you posted. It's literally a wedding dress just in red. You knew what you were doing. The listing literally says wedding dress. You're the asshole. Yeah, for me, it's a little bit of the choice of like, it's it's one thing if you, you have a dress and it ends up accidentally, but it says wedding dress. Right. I feel like that's easy to be like, I should find a different one. And and you're you're so right about the way that she put it out there as incriminating her further because yeah. the headline, I wore a pretty dress. We were like, you did nothing wrong, girly. And then you pull out the dress and you're like, that's much more than a pretty dress. Yeah. That's a full bridal gown. Yeah. And it is, again, the context of showing up to that, knowing that your ex is the one getting married, like it, it was intentional. She left the dress out intentionally. Like she knows that what she did maybe wasn't the best thing. And then she put it out there in a 
coerced way of being like, guys, I just wore a pretty dress. Like, tell me that this girl is crazy. And everyone was like, oh yeah, but let's see that dress. Lame. Key, key uh, factor in Absolutely. all of this. It Absolutely. almost feels like it should be a telltale sign if you are writing a thing and then you're about to say, or like you think that someone's gonna want some information, but you're like, mm, I probably shouldn't say that part. Yeah. 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 I probably shouldn't show the picture. No. That's the sign right there. Right, because then you know that you are the one in the wrong, but you're like, but I don't want to seem that way. Yeah. It happens so often. Yeah. 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 That's tough, but Asshole. it's cute. Asshole. Let's move on. It comes from relationship advice, but this also ended up being posted on Am I the Devil? Which is <laughs> oh, the worst place to end up. Oh is that God. worse than the asshole? Yeah, this is Am I the Devil is where they, they gather up all the worst of the worst. Ooh. This is a 32 year old man. I asked my wife, who's 30, if we could open the relationship. She agreed, and I'm feeling upset because although she's bisexual, she's only sleeping with men. Wait, sorry. <laughs> he thought opening the relationship would mean she'd sleep with women. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he's like fine buddy. with that. Oh, he's fine no. with that. No. Oh, God. No. I, I, I feel like this is one of our, we haven't read many posts like this. I see posts like this on Reddit all the time. Mm. Oh, yeah. Of people being like, yeah, we opened up our relationship and now things are going really bad. Like it's, <laughs> She's hooking up with other guys. It's, it's, or it's, what it is is, is that it's, what I've seen on Reddit is the guy being like, we should open up our relationship. And then like one post later being like, okay, we, we shouldn't do this. <laughs> um, let's see what this one is. Uh, 32 year old man and my wife is 30. Uh, after five years of marriage, I felt like she had given me all she had to offer. All right. Oh! Uh, all right, well. Uh, I want to leave. You know I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. You know what? You know what, let's pack this one up. <laughs> Uh, she had nothing else to give crazy. me. Crazy. He is the devil. I sucked that's her dry crazy. of everything she was worth. I got everything she had to offer. That's <laughs> wild everything she had on the table. Say. Five years. I thought she had a few more done. years of something oh, to offer me, but yeah. only that's, five years. She just lays there now. <sighs> now, please don't judge me for saying that. Okay. <laughs> he knows he's the asshole when he says that. But at least you he's not it, holding dude. back. He's putting the truth out there. All right, I'm, I'm with him. I'm just being honest. Uh, no, of course. She just had a very low sex drive and I have a higher one. I figured opening the relationship would help out marriage and help me get my needs met. She originally said no, but after I explained to her the benefits, she said yes after a few days of asking. We seem both excited at the possibility of a threesome. Now, where the problem lies is that my wife is bisexual, and yet the only people she's been sleeping uh, with have been men. When asked about this, she said she only sleeps with people she clicks with, and they just happen to be men. When I told her my feelings about this, she said it's only fair because I'm sleeping with other women. While true, it makes me wonder if she's truly <laughs> bisexual. No. Now he's questioning her sexuality? Uh -uh. When I asked her, when I asked for her to also sleep with women, or I'd want to close the marriage again. Hey babe, I have a request. Sleep with other women, please. But babe, yeah. please. Uh, babe. Or I'd want to close the marriage again. She rolled her eyes and said no. One of the guys I fear is trying to seriously date her. He brings her flowers and food, pays for her nails, and never even acknowledges me when he's over. I feel like she's Damn. dismissing my feelings and I'm getting frustrated. I want to close our marriage again. How do I approach this? Damn it, this guy's treating her better than me. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was treating her like shit because I was <laughs> done with her. She had nothing else to Dude. offer me. Now I see that she's worth something. You, th this is so, this is so messed up. I, yeah. Uh, this is the problem is that every, I don't think there's anything wrong. Uh, I, you know, I, I personally, no, I wouldn't be able to ever do it, but I don't think there's anything wrong with people opening up their marriage. Sure, I think sure. what people want to do is fine. But when people do it as a means of fixing something in their relationship, yeah. I'm like, you got, you, I think that's wrong. No. Yeah. And I think no. anytime, if, if people are in a relationship and they're even considering this, there are therapists who literally, there are sex therapists out yeah. there who you can yeah. talk to and be like, we're thinking of this. And they can be like, let's make sure this is what you both yeah. really want. Right, right. And there's, there's, you know, there's layers to it. Also, and it sounds like he had an expectation for the way things would go with her and who she would date and what it would mean. Completely. It sounds and like he had a fantasy. He had a fantasy. Yes, yeah. And he was none of these boundaries were discussed. And he's, he's trying to, to be like, I wanted to get, I wanted to help my needs get met. Like, no, you wanted your to get wet. You wanted, <laughs> you wanted these two women in front of you. You wanted a threesome with, with two women. Yeah, and yeah. now it's not working out and he's like, fuck, now this other guy's better at being a boyfriend than I am a husband. Yeah. 
It's and, not good at all. And it's and frankly, and I'm I'm reading into this, but it sounds like she didn't have a low sex drive. It sounds like they weren't fostering their relationship and yeah. their connection, so she wasn't into it. And and he here he is saying she's given me all she's had to offer. It's like no wonder she's not attracted to you. Truly, really? yeah. yeah. Like that's your mindset. It sounds like she's attracted to people that she clicks with. She said mm -hmm. that, and they just were not clicking. And it sounds like this man who felt like this woman uh, was worthless to him at this point, was not showing her that she had the value to him that maybe he was showing her in yeah. the beginning of Absolutely. the relationship when maybe they clicked better, maybe their, their sex life was better in the mm -hmm. beginning. Right, right. He jumped to a solution, which is what he thought was opening up the relationship when it literally could have been communicating, seeing a therapist, going to some like couples counseling, like actually coming up with what would be better Instead of just being like, oh, well, wait, maybe if she sleeps with other women, then she'll feel more enlightened and sexy, and then she can offer me more mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At no point did he mention her needs. Right. That's it's true. entirely about his needs, and now that they've opened up the relationship, she's now getting her needs met, and he's upset right. about that. And, and it's, it's like, clearly, she doesn't have a low sex drive. She doesn't want to have sex with you. Yeah, right. it's it's because he obviously didn't treat her as if she had value anymore. Even the way he discusses her, she had nothing it, else to offer. Yeah. Right. Her only, it seems like her only worth to him is sex, is based yeah. on his description here. Now it's right. a short post, but uh, let's read some comments here. Please. Maybe you were the reason she had a low sex drive and now she found someone else who finds her exciting. You opened the marriage. You have to deal with the consequences. There are many threads on Reddit where one wants to open the marriage and the other finds a better partner. Maybe that is what is happening with her. Yeah, that's true. That's the truth. Uh, someone said, LOL, I too am rolling my eyes at you. You made this bed, now lie in it. Someone else said, cool, the reality didn't live up, live up to your fantasy. Lesson learned. You can't dictate who your wife sleeps with. That's gross. Also, as a woman, sleeping with men is easy and accessible. It's much harder to find women who are open to hooking up with bi-partnered women. Mm. And then lastly, Huge. someone said, well, that's way too many words to justify cheating on your wife and hoping you would get a threesome with some hot women as an additional bonus for being a cheating clown. Well, There's no way your hopeless ass had no one ready and on the standby before this pathetic attempt to open your marriage the way you wanted. LOL, what a heartwarming story. Tell your wife she's a rock star. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he cheated because he did, but although he did pester her until she said yes. It seems that's the case. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it, also, he's like, I want to open it and I want to close it. Uh, and it's like, then he wants to open it. And then it just seems like he wants it to all be whatever will meet his needs in a very specific time right. without ever considering her. And I think that's what the issue is at the root. Yeah. Absolutely. He's like, you'll you'll catch up if I want to open it, if I want to close it. You'll just be on board because it's what I say, right? Yeah. yeah. Sounds like he wants to just be able to say whatever he wants to happen and that will happen without him putting in the effort of the work in order for him to actually see the results that he wants. Mm -hmm. He's given up on her. He could be working harder to show her that he's a good partner, that he cares about her. Mm. Maybe she would actually find him attractive again. Yeah. You know who else does that? The devil. This guy is a devil. This guy's uh, not just a He's asshole. a devil. I would also say he's just really stupid. Yeah. I think he's very emotionally immature. He's I think not there. he has not done work on himself. I think he has not ever maybe spoken about where these feelings are coming from. It seems like he doesn't he hasn't even tried to communicate with his wife about these feelings. Yeah. yeah. It seems like he just came up with an assumption of like, oh well she doesn't have anything else to offer me anymore instead of like discussing why the relationship has become right. stagnant. All right, next story here. Oh uh, this is Jeez. Am I the Asshole? That's never a good sign. Stop this ahead. Is, that's how you started. No, the I didn't see the title and then I'm just like <laughs> Uh, this was. Uh, this also ended up on Am I the Devil? So let's see if this beats. Uh, oh boy! Open, open marriage man. Am I the devil for making my ex, in quotations, homeless? <laughs> okay, I'm. I'm trying to think of a way that that's justified. Like they both owned a house together and they moved out, and she didn't have as much money or something. But let's. Where does this go? Okay, yeah, so let's, so let's if see. this if reading this title out loud the way it's written is. Am I the asshole for making my ex homeless? A while back, my wife and I got divorced pretty amicably. 
Instead of selling our family home and splitting the money, I suggested that I take a loan using the house as collateral and buy myself another place. That way she could continue to live there and our kids would inherit it eventually. She was reluctant, but eventually I convinced her. She's always been like that. Her reluctance to taking any chances has held me back many times. Anyway, this was a good plan and it worked for a while. Eventually, however, I ran into money trouble. Everything was more expensive than I thought. The fixer-upper I bought needed a lot of renovation and I got deeper in debt. I kept paying the bank, just not every month, sometimes less than the full amount due for the month, etc. Eventually, the bank foreclosed and the house was sold to repay the debt. It was a shock to everyone. The bank had sent some threatening letters, but as I was still paying, I didn't think they'd go that far. <laughs> anyway, my ex moved in with our youngest son. She is doing fine and is not in any way homeless, but she keeps complaining about losing the house and my kids have gone low contact with me. They all go out of their way to help their mom while I only get scraps every now and then, even though I also needed help sometimes since then. I know I made a mistake, but it's not like I planned it like this. I lost a lot too. And even though I have the house that I bought back then, it's nothing fancy and it's expensive to maintain. Besides, my ex got to live alone in the house for a couple of years rent free. Last time we met, I told my kids they should show more gratitude for my part in raising them. And they should think that they have two parents, not just one. They're all doing pretty well financially. They said I'm an asshole for demanding anything of them after what I did to their mom. They said I should give her some money every month to compensate for some of the loss. While I do earn more than her, I have expenses too, and it's not like she needs it really. She's living rent free and our son is pretty well off, so he won't be kicking her out. I admit that my plan didn't work out and it caused her some loss, but am I really such an asshole for expecting my kids to help me too, like they help my ex? Oh boy. <sighs> that is uh, a lot to unpack. It is a lot to unpack. I, I am... I don't know if it's a bias or just from reading a lot of these Reddit stories, whenever it's a parent and at any point they talk about their kids being low or no contact, I immediately am just kind of like, well, you're probably the asshole. Like, yeah. it takes a lot for, for your kids to for be like, bye. Multiple kids to all be like, we don't want to deal with you. He was like, this was a good plan. She was reluctant. She's always reluctant. But this was a good plan and it worked for a while until it didn't. Yeah. And he and had to pester her and pester her until mm -hmm. she finally said yes. And I think that's a thing. That's probably what she's been holding on to this whole time is how she's like, I knew this wasn't a good decision and you essentially forced me to say okay to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not some financial genius, but suggesting that I take a loan using the house's collateral and buy myself another place. Uh, I, I, that's the the nature of that is a huge risk. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. a huge risk. And then it's like, oh, I ended up in money troubles. It's like, well, yeah, like you that's the actual risk that you knew could happen. Totally. And it seems like she was aware that it could happen too. I feel bad for her. Um Yeah, my my problem with this guy is that he he came up with this plan and when it inevitably failed, he's like, well, but it was good enough for a while. And he's like riding off of that. Yeah, like you lived rent free for multiple years. Yeah, he's like it failed, but it took time for it to fail. Yeah. And in that time, that it wasn't, it hadn't failed yet. You got to live in that house rent free, and now that it failed, and he is still living in his own place, he's like, well, you guys are doing fine. Like you, you had everything that I gave you, and now you should help me out. And it's like, no, you made a huge mistake, mm -hmm. and you're not taking any accountability. I am sure that the ex and the kids would be able to hear him out if he was like, huge mistake. Like, let's let's maybe have my place as where we both coexist yeah, for yeah. a bit. Like, mm -hmm. trying to come up with some sort of troubleshooting. Instead, like, he justified every moment of it. Yeah, and, and I, he's just like, well, I'm going through it. I need some help. And you're yeah. like, no, you're not offering anything else. And I have, a th I have some theories. You know, he said eventually the bank foreclosed on the house. Uh, uh, he's like, it was a shock to everyone. The bank had sent me some threatening letters, but as I was still paying, I didn't think they'd go that far. I think it was it, it was either not a shock to everyone, or it was a shock to everyone because he wasn't relaying this information. Yeah, like, You're getting threatening letters from the bank? Like, dude. He just brushes it down. off. He's like, on, he's, like, he's like, I didn't think it was that serious. It's just, Come on. It's the just bank? the bank who owns what the house gonna threatening do? me. If the bank sends me a threatening letter, I'm crying. Like, that's yeah. scary. Yeah, that's you terrifying. are in debt to the bank. You are in debt to someone 
whether or not it's the bank. And that person, the bank, is saying, we're going to take this away yeah. from you. Oh, the first all right thing you do, do so. is tell your mom. Like, yeah. he's got to tell his wife or his ex, like, this situation. He has to communicate what's going on. And, you know, it really frustrates me that he was like, oh, my youngest son is well off. He's not going to kick his mom out. Obviously, he's not going to kick his mom out, but that doesn't mean that's the ideal situation to be to support, living his life. To support his mother and have his mother living with him because his dad took a huge risk. Totally. Lost their house that they grew up in, and the dad, this guy, still has his other place. Mm-hmm. He still has it. He didn't give it up. And he's like, he's like, it's not that luxurious. It's like, just a shitty little house. It's a home. <laughs> it's a home with a roof, yeah, dude, and the ex house. does not have one. She doesn't. Yeah. It's yeah. so shitty. Yeah. Um, comments here. I'd bet money this wasn't the first promise he didn't keep. Uh, someone else said, LOL, wife always held you back, huh? Bet, uh, but when you go solo, you fail so spectacularly that you lose both houses and whatever goodwill remained with your family. Yep, you're the asshole. <laughs> Love the passive voice on why you failed with the renovation. Everything was more expensive. Not. I didn't do my research or have True. an actual feasible plan. Mm. True. True. Uh, Someone else said, you're the asshole. Foreclosure is not something that happens overnight. You 100% knew it was coming and didn't tell her. That's what I believe. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Last, lastly, someone said, you're the asshole. The house should have been sold instead of you taking a loan using the house as collateral. Your inability to pay the loan causes foreclosure of the house, causing your ex and youngest to move. Did you even give her any of the money from the sale of the house? Finally, your kids don't owe you anything. Clearly, they can see uh, that your mess up screwed their mom over. Damn. Yeah, no, and, he. And he that was... little jab he made too at the beginning, like she's always holding me oh, back. Oh, I hate or that. She's always reluctant. Like, yeah, okay, that's so gross. you're angry, and you clearly executed that inside of your plan too. Yeah. And then he demands respect from his children instead of earning it. Right. Just after like, you after, need to respect me. Yeah. After screwing everyone over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, come on. Just being like, you have two parents, you know mm-hmm. that? And it's like, no, they're not just supporting her because they're because she's oh. a parent, but because she has clearly gone through it and he's with a- you. He's acting like his decisions only affected, you know, it's bad enough, but he's acting like it only affected his, his wife, but yeah. it affected everyone in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, however, I ran into money trouble. <laughs> Care to explain? The money dude? trouble found me. That, I was just feels, minding my own business. That feels like the red wedding dress in this one, where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "What's the money trouble, dude? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. is it? Yeah. What happened? It's, it's not gambling or drugs. Yeah, I'm kind of like, "Come on, dude, tell us what happened." No. Yeah. He knew. And he then, knew. And just also, like she knew. They he, knew. He didn't. He didn't have a plan for the renovations at all, or a, an, an estimate that he had that he stuck to, or. Mm-hmm. He's just He just kept doing whatever happened. I yeah. just kept paying the bills right. through the bank. He's like, I'm giving them a few hundred. Like, they don't mean what they're saying in these letters. Yeah. They're just bluffing. I threw the bank some scraps. They should, <laughs> they should be fine with right. that. Right. I am someone who's terrified of banks, IRS, sh- any government stuff. Um, I, I know, like, you can't, some, sometimes people get away with it. Like, they get, like, they skim by, and they're like, okay, they, they're not going to foreclose it. I'm paying a, a just enough, or I, I'm late, but it's okay. Look, man, banks don't give a shit yeah. about you. <laughs> like, yeah. they really don't. No. Like I feel like this guy is used to, like, skipping out on taxes this year, skipping jury yeah. duty. Right. Like, he's like, it's not really that serious. Yeah. No, uh, the, a bank will ruin your life. They <laughs> yeah. really, truly and, do not And it shit. sounds like he still literally does did not learn his lesson. He's like, no. well, at least we were good for a while. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's not like, well, lesson learned. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, right. he's not acting like he learned a single lesson throughout this entire thing. Well, and he's, he's not even... himself. Yeah, he's not, and he's not acting like any of it was his decision that caused this issue. He's like, right. he's like, the renovations were more expensive. Yeah. Like, there were some money troubles. The bank was coming after me. It was all these external factors. Right. Like nothing. He's not taking ownership of it. Nothing of like, I should have done this. I should have listened to the letters. No regret. I will admit. Nothing learned. No. Yeah, uh, I, and he's he's saying like, it was a good plan. I'm like, I don't think it was a good plan. Yeah. I don't think it was a good plan. Okay. It was a good plan. And no. you know who else does that? The devil. The devil. The devil. Mm. Moving on. Am I the asshole for leaving sexually explicit messages where my colleague could see them? 
this is gonna be funny because uh, we uh, all of us at Smosh just had to take the sexual harassment training course yeah. thing, like the online course. I think this is literally one of the examples. Yeah, they, like, they show sure. like these these two guys are like, "Oops, I accidentally uh, <laughs> left this message here in front of my colleague," and it's like right, that is a right. no no. Yeah. And it's like that person looks to the camera and they're like, "What do I do?" <laughs> yeah. I would I would kill to be an actor in one of those. I, d I did those once. I did those did once you? in college. Did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I bet shit. I could find them too. What was it for? I did it for I did it for like inside of high schools. Like if students are asking teachers, like I can't afford my textbooks, could you help me out? Oh. And then the professor would be like, "What do I do?" So this is something they show <laughs> to the professors to say like. This might happen to you. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have the footage, you guys, and I'm willing to share. That's crazy. Oh, it's insane. Am I the asshole for leaving sexually explicit messages where my colleague could see them? I, a 35-year-old woman, am a teacher at an alternative school where each class has two teachers. My co-teacher, who's 34, is very in your face, in your business, and doesn't understand boundaries very well. She is always looking over my shoulder. She will straight up yank my laptop away from me and look at what I'm typing. If my phone goes off, she goes, ooh, who is that? And things of that nature. I've gently tried to explain to her that I don't want her touching my stuff like that. She'll say stuff like, oh, well, I'm an open book. It's no big deal. When I've explained less gently to her, she borderline cries and gets into an anxiety loop where she accuses me of being mean and or mad at her. I'm currently in a long distance relationship and my boyfriend and I rely uh, a lot on sexting to keep our relationship fun. He's in a different time zone, so the things I send him at night won't get responses until the next morning sometimes. Today I noticed he was sending me text responses to photos I had taken last night about what they made him want to do with me. Uh, I want to point out quickly that there were no kids in this room uh, at this time, and even if one had wandered in, they're too short to get my phone and too young to read. I decided to leave my phone on a tall standing desk by my own laptop while going to get a cup of coffee, knowing my co-teacher would probably look at it. When I got back, my co-teacher told me in a very serious voice that I need to be careful about what I am doing at work because she saw my disgusting and inappropriate texts. I told her she wouldn't have seen them if she hadn't been looking for them. And she said that wasn't the point, that she felt sexually harassed but wouldn't go to HR about it because <laughs> the children wouldn't be able to handle a change in teachers. Wow! Oh uh, I am actually curious about just like legally and HR wise the interpretation right. of that. Right. Um, uh, let me because we've had we've had stories like this before. I think anyone who is like invasive in this way is an asshole. Yeah, you're an asshole. Whether whether an HR person would say that what she did was wrong, whether she, but I, but I also am like I never I never am I never see what's on anyone's phone. Ever, right. yeah. like I do view that on my on my personal level, I do view, view that as almost like what's going on in your head. Like I'm like that's your own private space. Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. I'm not gonna see that, so I don't really care. Um, I, I so I don't I don't know where I stand on this because I, I ultimately just think this person sounds annoying as fuck. I, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The who is it? Like sure, if you're like one of my best friends, like, and my mm -hmm. phone goes off, like, I'm and gonna tell you work. who texted even, me. Even if you're your best friend at work, you're not doing that Totally, stuff. no, yeah. that's like when you're hanging out, somebody's phone's going off, you might be like, who's calling? But like, mm -hmm. I agree, people's business are their own business, like, you have really no right, I, I love what you said, like, yeah, it's their head, it's their thoughts that they're like typing out to other people, particularly too in this relationship, that is 100% between the two of them and should not be, uh, peaked at. Right. One hundred percent the person who is being invasive is the asshole. But I do want to mention that you can make it so you can choose a setting on your phone so that the the contents of a text does not automatically display in the notification. Yeah. yeah. She I'm curious, I decided to leave my phone on a tall standing desk by my own laptop while going to get coffee, knowing my co teacher would probably look at that's it. That's the kind of a weird I, detail I, that's, I, that's, that's, still and that's the, mm. we've had stories like this and I know a lot of people disagree with me on it, and I, I think that's okay, because I do think this person's an asshole. I think you're an asshole if you're invasive in any sort of way. But it's the matter of purposefully, know, like knowing in your head they're about to see this, and you want them to see it. What, do you think that's what it was? Like she wanted her? She, she, she know, knowing my co-teacher would probably look at it. She said that. Um, yeah. I she left it there think. knowing my co-teacher. Now, I can't relate to that, because I just wouldn't want anyone to see it. Yeah. Right, I Especially if I me. don't know what my like a significant other is gonna mm -hmm. say, you're like mm -hmm. um, 
there is also something of like you're on work time um, and you teach kids. Now, there were no kids in the room, but it's like you don't know what your partner might send. Like if you're you And if going. she's sending pictures, the partner might she send a picture. She sent pictures last night. Like yeah. He might send a picture like back responding. in the morning. Like That's what right. I'm saying. Like if he sends a dick pic <laughs> and it's there and a kid sees it, yeah. you are probably fired. You don't then. need to read yeah. to see that. I would, for my take on that, it's just like I'm like, I'm not going to risk that. Yeah, like, that's a yeah. risk. I'm and not. I'm gonna keep my phone very close to me Absolutely. if that's yeah. something that I'm concerned about. Especially if I have this invasive coworker, I kind of feel like I am never leaving my shit out. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I, 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 but I would absolutely. I mean, I think she should. She could have complained to higher ups of like, hey, they are consistently grabbing my devices, grabbing my phone, looking at my stuff. Yeah. Uh, my my privacy is being invaded. Yeah. Totally. Uh, uh, it is funny that she threatened the HR thing when. Mm -hmm. She could have had HR called on her this entire time. Right. Certainly. Uh, the verdict was everyone sucks. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I see it. I um, see it. Uh, yeah. Someone said, everyone sucks here. She shouldn't have been snooping, but come on, don't sext during work time. OP responded, I don't sext at work. My boyfriend responded to texts I had sent the night before, and I let the previews stay on the phone while I grabbed a cup of coffee. Why did she I let usually just keep my phone away and don't respond until I'm home in the evening. 727 upvotes. Um, someone else said, what if her boss walked in and happened to glance at the phone screen lighting up with a new message and saw inappropriate content on a phone lying about? Some of us have just that luck. Not to mention, OP should know better than to underestimate kids' ability to get places they shouldn't be, to grab things they shouldn't have. Uh, OP said, uh, kids are pre-K, they were at recess and couldn't come back without an adult escort walking them past the break room where I was getting coffee. Standing desk is at the back corner of the room. I had my phone between my laptop and the wall. The only way for her to see the text is to walk to the back corner, lean over my laptop, and tap the screen to see previews. Yeah. I was gone for a maximum of five, five minutes. 41 downvotes, but I mean like, if it was truly like that secure and she had to tap it to look at it, I mean I, I would hate someone who's doing that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. would hate them. They, no, definitely she should have reported the invasive person and that could have all been avoided. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think the verdict makes sense, everyone sucks, but I, I don't think that the person who, again, like she said, she wasn't sexting at work, she was just like, I'm not even gonna respond to this because I'm at work, I'm with it's these a, kids, like, she left it there. It's a good question of, I, I'm, I'm so, I have so many questions of yeah. like, are you responsible for texts you receive? Right. Like, if you didn't send anything inappropriate, yeah. but someone happens to send you something inappropriate and your phone is out, I f is that your responsibility? I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely yeah. curious. I feel like it wouldn't be your responsibility, but in this case it is her responsibility because this is a habit and routine. This is something she, it sounds like she knew this was happening yeah. and she, it sounds like it was a conscious decision to leave the previews on the phone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something I am conflicted about and uh, I'm so curious what our comments will say. Um, well, here's, here's what I'll also say with, with HR getting involved. She would have a much stronger case if this wasn't a habit or a pattern. I, I just am confident that that HR person would be like, has this happened before where she touches your phone? And the answer will be like, oh yeah, she does it all the time. And then it's like, okay, well, why didn't you report that? Right. Like right. that is a huge um, privacy matter that could have then avoided this whole situation. Uh, somewhat, last comment here is, it's not so much about whether you're an asshole or not, but rather whether you'd be willing to lose your job just to be shocking to this woman. Probably not a smart smart move career-wise. I think that's what I agree with. Um, yeah. Most of all, I'm like, you purposefully left previews up. She was trying to be shocking, you it sounds like. You were trying to show this to him, and I'm like, that's where, I get it, because I, I I know that that would cross my mind too if I was dealing with an invasive person where I'd be like, well, I'm gonna make them pay. Yeah. But I also am like, you're, you're risking a lot for that for that catharsis. I feel like there's something unspoken here because I wanna know why is she trying to have her see this? If it was just a little funny prank, I might put, I might <laughs> have my partner text me something that was about that person as mm. a joke or something, yeah. but it was just random little, well, let's see, because oh. update. Oh, thank oh, God. We need this update. 
So I decided to take everyone's advice and went to HR about my colleague snooping and they determined she is in the wrong for snooping and that I hadn't done anything wrong since. Great. I don't send any non-work related texts at work unless it's my lunch break and I never text my boyfriend from work which is backed up by CCTV. Keep my phone in my work apron whenever kids might be around. My co-teacher has hers out often, so I usually know when we're getting work-related messages because she sees them first and is incapable of not commenting on them verbally. I had put my phone in a discreet corner of the room in the back at my desk between my laptop and the wall. My colleague had walked to the back of the room as soon as the door shut behind me, leaned across my laptop and tapped the screen to view text previews after my screen had gone dark and picked up my phone to look at them, which was on CCTV. Ooh, you, that's, Jesus. You cannot do that. that is no, that's insane. You can't. That's absolutely insane. Uh, a few other clarifications. I have text previews on and image previews off. Pictures just show up as the word image in my preview. The reason I have text previews turned on is that my job uses the same messaging app as my boyfriend and when you're working with kids, it's good to be able to see what's going on immediately rather than logging in and slogging through a dozen texts. Parents also text through the work group chat and I don't reply outside of designated hours and they hate being left on red. So it's great to know when it's explain in detail why my Johnny in the green group and not in uh, not the gold group versus by the way, Johnny will die if he eats peanuts and I forgot to tell you and it's ants on a log day, LMA. When my boyfriend texts me during work hours, I usually immediately clear the previews out and I don't open our chat until I'm in the car, my car after work. If there is a way to turn off text previews for one person and not another in this app, I don't know it. On this day, the kids had just been dismissed to music class and lunch for the next hour and some. They are three to four years old and can't come back to the room without an adult escorting them. And if this had happened for a wildly unusual reason, they would have been escorted past the break room where I was. Then, if a kid had somehow gotten to my standing desk and gotten a hold of my phone after pushing a chair toward it and climbing up to get my phone unnoticed, they would not know how to read. That's a lot of what ifs to happen in the time it took me to use the Keurig. Uh, four, there was no reason for anyone to be at my desk. It's in the back of the room and just has my stuff on it. My phone was only visible to someone who was looking for it and who would have to tap the screen and pick up the phone to look at the previews. So that's it. Was it petty and risky for me to do what I did? For sure. Should I have complained to HR on my own sooner? Yes, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but it's done and hopefully snooping is now over. Yeah, some, some context here too. Even though she's using her phone for work, if her job is not paying for her cell phone bill or providing a separate work phone, they likely cannot police what content is on her phone. Interesting. Mm. Oh. Um, yeah, knowing that this this woman walked up, like grabbed her phone, like yeah. tapping someone else's phone, insane to yeah. me. I was just thinking, I like agree. imagine literally anybody in the room, just right. you walking in and them being on your phone, you yeah. would immediately be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, that's inappropriate. No, it's it's absolutely insane. I think it's insane no matter who it is, like like significant others, anyone. I'm like, to tap someone's phone, like I said, I view that as like part of a person. So I'm like, dude, that's, uh, yeah. that's Protocol is usually like somebody's phone, like whose is right. this? Like I'm not looking at exactly. it, I'm not even gonna touch it. Um, Damn, that says a lot about where we are though. If that, if your phone is a part of you, like your brain. I know, uh, that yeah. for sure, but it's, but, but I just mean like it's part of your private life. I mean, it's you know? true, it's, it is it's, true. Everything is it's housed It's no different there. than looking through someone's email inbox or, or looking through, it, you know, it, it's like looking through someone's safe in their house. It, or, it is the right. same thing. And I'm like, like digging around in their room. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. like, it's, it's stuff that they have like written out. It's stuff that like their thoughts are out there. It's it's more just that no, you, you are putting things down on your phone that you aren't expecting other people to see. Yeah. Like that yeah. is the big thing is that you feel safe and it's, private yeah. in your phone. You feel safe texting another person, hoping that it's just you and them speaking. This person's a, a weirdo. Super uh, straight up. Weird. I mean, and and to your response, the response of like to get anxious and like sad or whatever. I'm like, well, you're making this person anxious by invading their space. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Sorry. I don't I like weird. it at all. She um, needs some more drama in her own life. Yeah, that is what she's looking for. I, I will say it is weird how the the poster is like, yeah, it was petty. It feels like there's something else there. What was petty about it to the poster? Was it that she was like fishing for a reaction? Uh, I, she was looking for a cathart, she wanted to shock her. She wanted to make her feel bad about snooping. Um, and that's not the, we've had stories like that before. And I, I, I get it, I get that like, 
well, they're not going to stop doing it. Right. So I want to make them. But especially in a work setting, y you should go about it professionally. Yeah. yeah. Because seeking out that revenge, you might sacrifice your job in the process. Right. And right. she she admits she could have gone to HR sooner, but instead yeah. she took the route of I'm going to shock them because yeah. it sounds like she knew the what what messages were going to show up. What messages she would see. It almost seems like yeah. that. It seems yeah. a little planned out, but I I. I'm fully in forgiveness of her because it sounds mm -hmm. like she is holding responsibility for all of it. Yeah, it's also wild that this all happened with when they have CCTV. And I'm like, right. oh, it's there. You're saying she's grabbing your devices. It's on camera. And they could go back through all the CCTV and they footage did, and they and could and see they, all the yeah. times that this woman's grabbing her shit. Yeah, Freaking I'm just, wild. I'm imagining it too. And the desk is just in this corner. And if she's saying like it's between her laptop and the wall, it could not be further away yeah. from the children, from her workspace. Like. This other woman is intentionally trying to go over, pick up the phone, see what it is, and then act like it affected her and like she right. is the victim of this situation. It sounds yeah. like this invasive person just always has on their mind, like, what's on everyone else's phones? Right. What's on yeah. their phones? It's like, I don't, I don't understand that mindset. Yeah. I'm a private person. I also really try to respect other people's privacy. Yeah, yeah. As you should. All right. Last story. Am I the asshole for refusing to delete a video taken in public? Uh, I think we might have another, we, there could be another devil. Sounds like okay. a yes to me, because if you refuse to take down a video that someone else requested to take down, you're probably an asshole. But, yeah. uh, okay, let's see what let's you got. See. Okay, well, take down food battle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, delete, that wasn't recorded in public. <laughs> take down, take down Smosh then. Yeah, you know what? Well done. Just erase yourself. I'm uh, gonna take down this video. No! Not whoa. the Happy New Year video. <laughs> Here we go. Am I the asshole for refusing to delete a video taken in public? This weekend, my girlfriend and I were walking at a local reservoir. When down by the water, we saw a lady going past us with hundreds of ducks following her. I am not exaggerating at all. I'd say there were at least 200 to 300 birds, if not more, quacking and splashing and climbing all over each other, trying to get closer to the food she was tossing. It was a hell of a scene. So I started recording it because frankly, I'd never seen anything quite like it before. I'd say the path where we were was about 30 or 40 feet back from the water. So it was from a pretty respectable distance, not getting up in her face or anything. For a good minute or two, I'm just filming all these ducks going crazy. Well, the lady looks up and sees me and says, are you recording? I tell her, yeah, I'm recording it. There are like 300 ducks back there. So she yells, I don't want to be in the picture. Delete that video. I didn't give you permission. I tell her, no, I'm not deleting it. We're out in public. I don't need permission to take pictures of things. I'm not even taking a video of you. You just happen to be in it walking past. She says, well, then how about if I take a picture of you and pulls out her phone? I tell her, I don't care. Go ahead. <laughs> what are you going to do? Frame it? So she, she's just standing there taking pictures of us until finally we all walk away pissed off. <laughs> So am I the asshole? I guess this lady thought I was being rude, but I didn't see anything wrong with what I was doing, especially uh, since it wasn't even her I was really taking the video of. Okay. This is du this is Duck Lady who was complaining? Yeah. Or? Yeah. The duck but lady you were taking saying. videos of so the ducks. So the Duck Lady started okay. taking photos of them and and uh, yeah. Okay. I could see this cuz legally I think legally you are allowed to take videos in a public space. I think legally he was he's within his rights. Yes. So it's not yes. a legal conversation. It's, a, it's, it's not on a, a technicality. It's an asshole conversation. Yeah. Right. Someone being like, hey, I don't want to be in your video. Um, I think it's fair to say I don't want to be in a video and then you, uh, I think the respectful thing to do is say, okay. Yeah. It sounds like those ducks aren't going anywhere. <laughs> it sounds like there's 300. It's like, it's like, great, do you mind if I, but can I record these ducks yeah. over here? Yeah, or crop you out. Like you can't complain if someone's recording something that you're not in. Yes. Right. Um, so it sounds like he could have easily just been like, oh, sorry, I'll delete this one and then I'm going to film yes. these ducks. Yes, It's asshole behavior to be like, no. Yeah. Like, I, somebody's asking you to do something. It's not about the legality of it. It's just like being kind just and be respecting it. a little bit respe respectful. And honestly, nowadays, man, like videos can go viral. And like it doesn't sound, she's not doing anything wrong in the video, but like, the next day she could wake up and suddenly it's like, duck lady. And it's like, you're all over TikTok and right, Twitter and people right. are talking about duck lady. Or this is what she does. This is her private thing. Now more yeah. people are going to start trying oh, to join that's in. And it's, it's hard to know what ramifications she yeah. imagined there would be. But if someone says, please don't record me, obviously you say, okay, I won't record you. It She's could, trying to gatekeep the ducks. It could <laughs> potentially... I don't know, it could potentially be illegal to feed the birds here or something in this mm. reservoir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, hey, like, don't. Um, 
But if to me, my take is I'm like, dude, it's so easy to just like not have this be a situation. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause, cause frankly, look, I, I, I get it. You run into like, I'm imagining this is an older woman. You can run into just like crazy people who are like, hey, are you recording me? Like, I'm gonna record you. And I'm like, you might be crazy, but like, let me just avoid this, this situation. conflict. Like, yeah. I'll go record the ducks <laughs> yeah. over here. Um, uh, to, to give him some credit too, it doesn't sound like she was the coolest about it too. No. Like yelling from 30 feet away, it's obviously not very easy to be receptive to that. And then being like, well, I'm gonna take your picture. Like, I'm sure that that riled him up and he was like, great, I'll pose. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure that that just made the whole altercation really oh, aggressive. Yeah. It almost just both... became out like principle, it's like, I can legally do this, though. Yeah. It's like, okay. Like, <laughs> cool, yeah. but how about you just be a nice person about it? Yeah. We don't know the gender of this person. Um, they were there with their girlfriend. Um, I would say if it was a man by himself, I 100% understand someone not wanting to be recorded by some guy. Sure. Uh, but if it's a couple and he's, and they're clearly stating like, oh, I'm here, there's 300 ducks here, I wanna record this. Yeah. I get that. I mean, yeah. And when it was brought up, he was like, the ducks, they're cool, right? Like, right. He, it didn't really seem like he was making, yeah. he made it pretty obvious it wasn't about her initially. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think this lady might be a little nuts, but like. <laughs> the context was clear though, that it was about the ducks, it wasn't about her. And yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, whatever the gender was of whoever was taking the video, they were with their girlfriend, and I always, whenever I see at least just a man with a girl, I'm like, okay, she, he's with a woman, he's safer. He's, I, I <laughs> she trust thinks him. he's safe. I trust so. it. Yeah, no, exactly. I trust that she's not going to be with a bad man. So I trust this couple. Yeah. So I think I think that just gives that would give me a little bit more ease, and I would hope that that would happen with this older woman. But I, I guess she could have just still felt targeted. Um, some comments here. Uh, you're the asshole. It might be legal, but if someone doesn't want to be recorded, you should respect that. Someone else said, agreed. You might be on legally solid ground, not sure, but that seems right. But that doesn't make you scot-free on the asshole scale. You're the asshole. Uh, someone else asked for some info. They said, uh, info, if you post it online or save to show others, will you be editing her out of it or downloading something to hide her privacy? OP responded, I don't really plan to post it online, and in any case, all you really see of this lady is the side slash back of her head as she goes by, which was mostly covered by a hat, and from like 30 feet away. Someone said, so the answer to my question is no then? <laughs> you will not be doing anything to protect your privacy. You're the asshole. OP says, not doing anything to protect her privacy. You mean other than keeping the video private, and you can't even see who she is anyways? Uh, 69 down votes, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, is privacy is privacy not posting it online, or is privacy like oh, but you still have that video, right? right. You, so, someone has a video of you, like that is uncomfortable. I guess someone with that logic could argue that they record you, and they're like oh, but it's private. It's just for me. Yeah, or yeah. he he very well could have just been yeah, like that's somehow so much worse. <laughs> yeah, Don't yeah, worry, I'm yeah, not gonna I, post I, this. This I, is for my private just, collection. I put it in my hidden folder. It's cool. It's like I oh. mean, he easily could have just lied as well and been like okay, yeah, I'm gonna delete it because she's not gonna see it on the. Is she, is she gonna swim over, like, get, like whatever, paddle over? God, I hope when I'm scrolling through TikTok next, I get a 300 duck video, followed by a getting ready for a date I don't wanna go on video. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you know I'm gonna see that dress pop yeah. up as a sponsored. They're listening to me. Um, someone said, so in my country, it would be illegal for you to post that if the person in the recording does not consent. Because here, there really is an expectation of privacy even when in public. Not everyone has the need nor desire to be trending on TikTok. <laughs> Some of us also don't want our image slash likeness scattered on the internet. You would be the asshole if you post it unedited. Do what you can to remove or blur her out if possible. Have a shred of understanding that some people just don't want to be recorded and spread to the entire world population. Keep in mind, this is only if you post it online. Recording for your own private use only, that's not really a concern. OP said, yeah, I've got no interest in posting it on the internet. Not everything has to be viral. 644 upvotes. Uh, someone responded to that saying, I did chuckle when you got all annoyed and left because she turned the tables and filmed you. Do you still not understand why you doing it to her was intrusive and annoying, even when you felt the same thing yourself? You're the asshole for an entitled lack of empathy. People aren't just props for your life. OP responded to that saying, 
I didn't feel the same thing myself. I honestly didn't care that she was taking pictures of me. It wasn't intrusive or annoying. It was just stupid at that point to keep standing around arguing with this dingbat when that's what the situation had devolved to. 126 down votes on that one. Thank God. S someone said, if a woman asks you to stop staring at her, the not creepy and non-asshole thing to do is stop. I don't see why you think making a personal video of someone who asked you not to is so different. Um, the fact that he's like, well, I didn't feel intrusive and I didn't feel weird or annoyed about it. And it's like, okay, but not everybody thinks like you do. Yeah. Like she clearly expressed yeah. that she was not cool with you filming her. So her turning around, like, yeah, that was obviously a bad argument on her part to be like, well, I'm going to film you. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is that they both came off of that understanding it differently. Right. Yeah, I feel like this boils down to the common thing that we're all told is like treat others like you want to be treated. And I think some people really take that literally mm -hmm. yep. instead of like treat people, like make others feel the way you want to feel. Instead they say, I won't mind people filming me so I don't mind filming right. her. And right. you shouldn't mind me filming you either. Right. It's like that, <laughs> well that, that, that motto has kind of been told to kids as something that's supposed to be helpful. I think some people just really take that to heart. I, I yeah. saw a really good rewrite of that motto and it was treat others how they want to be treated. Yeah. And I think that's so much better. Like yeah. just let other people outline their boundaries to you and then you can be like, cool, I'm going to respect that. Here are mine. Instead right. of just being like, well, I'd be cool with you recording me. So I'm just going to treat you how I want to be treated. You mean treat right. people with respect? No, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, yeah, that's yeah, no, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's all our stories. Who do we think was the biggest asshole out of all of these? We've got so we've got the I already know the guy who made his ex homeless. We've got the <laughs> lady who wore a wedding dress to a wedding. <laughs> kind of iconic. We have the guy who opened up his relationship and is mad his wife's not sleeping with oh, women. It's yeah. him. It's him. Um, <laughs> uh, we have the lady who's snooping around way too much. Ooh. Um, She's just annoying. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and the guy. Oh, yeah, you said the homeless thing, and the, and the guy taking photos of the woman. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I'm split between the guy that made his wife homeless. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy that wanted to open his relationship to meet his needs, and then when his wife's needs started getting met, he got pissed off. Yeah, it is a tie between them. I would say I'm gonna go with the house because I think more. I feel like more damage was done there, mm. but right. I don't know. That's tough. No, it's that's hard fair. to know. That's relationship versus financial because I feel like I feel like that relationship one is just going to end. Like I think she, I think she's probably. And it does feel like she might already have other guys that are going to treat her well lined up. It seems like it worked out for her, whereas the house one, she got really screwed over. And now she doesn't have a house, and the kids are low contact. Yeah, it's impossible to compare these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. It's ultimately like in the comments. Let us know your vote. Yeah, I just um, I just didn't like the language. Around around the whole opening of the it, relationship. A lot of it comes down to the writing. The yeah. writing, the way that he was just yeah. like, she has everything to offer, like that really just didn't sit right with any of us. The way it was written, exactly. The tone, the way this guy thinks about himself and his wife and his place in the marriage, yeah. that, yeah. I think that wins the biggest asshole just in the term, terms of the way he's going about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, and the girl who made the TikTok too about not wanting to go on the date. Did we mention yeah. her too? Right, no. Yeah. I mean, that, she was also a jerk. That she's girl jerk. sucks, but I don't think that she's anywhere she's near like the devil. The, devil. the same caliber, yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know your opinions down in the comments below, and uh, we will see you next Saturday for a massive Reddit story compilation. Oh. It's gonna be all of our favorite stories from this, from the, this whole series, uh, frankly. And it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be cozy. It'll be 2024. Uh, it's gonna be unbelievably cozy. <laughs> like, and you're recording a long cozy. A long cozy stream. Uh, and you're recording new bits for it? or uh, I, I, I filmed a bunch of interstitials. Oh, wow. Uh, but it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long video. Like uh, these interstitials are gonna come come around like every hour. Like it's, oh. and I get cozier, I get cozier and cozier yep. as it goes. Yep. It's great. Um, nice. So check that out. And thank you both for being here. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey man, 2024 is gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be big. I'm getting nice and settled in with Smosh in 2024. Wow. Things are gonna get unless, even better. Unless you have to delete the video because yeah. I, don't, True. I don't wanna be on it. Yeah, you, you decided last minute you don't wanna <laughs> Yeah, I don't wanna have a private person. <laughs> I'm like, it was just for me, for my own private video. Okay, well, then that's I'm fine. just having our team edit it just for me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, guys, We'll see you next year. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh.